All right, this is part six of my series looking at uh, Carl Bell's television program, Creation in the 21st Century, a specific episode that features Floyd Nolan Jones and is called... Wow, that is a huge gap. No, wait, that's not it. It's, uh... The gaps are enormous. So let's get started. When we left off, uh, Jones was discussing Pachycetus. Well, uh, Dr. Pach Jones, tell me, how on earth... Can any scientist suppose that this wolf-like creature, this mammalian creature, could be mistaken for a, a transitional form to a whale? There's no way in the So there's no possible way that any reasonable person could look at Pachycetus and think of it as a transitional form between terrestrial mammals and the fully aquatic whales, despite the fact that, well... We know that it lived in an environment where it, a, a very semi-aquatic environment, meaning uh, swamps, riverbanks, this kind of habitat that, it, that where the fossils are found. Um, it had teeth that are very, very similar to the, um, well, to the, I mentioned before, the mesonychids, but more importantly, these um, anthro anthracotheres, uh, which are thought to be re closely related to hippopotamuses and early whales. Uh, the teeth were similar to those, and similar to the teeth of the Arcosite whales that would come later on, like Bacillosaurus. Um, so right there is evidence that it's an intermediate. Uh, let's see. Oh, the one that the one the thing that 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 Gingrich first noticed with this fossil when he when he found it, um, that that let him know that something was strange about it, that it was different than other fossil artiodactyl that had been found at that time is the fact that it had a whale-like ear bones. It had a whale-like, what's called a bulla, um, that no other mammal has. Cetaceans have this unique type of ear design. It's a unique solution to hearing underwater. We don't find it in any other group of mammals. Nothing else has it except for the cetaceans, and yet this animal, this wolf-like animal, had the whale ear bones, um, had, the, I mean, had the whale ear structure. Uh, which it probably used now now people there's been obviously it's speculation but one of the unique things about it is that it has a peculiar type of bone density um, it shares this feature with another pachycetid into highest um, that enables it to it would sink in the water we see this with hippopotamuses as well most mammals float um, but things like the hippopotamuses and and these these uh, pachycetids if they were to jump in the water say a predator comes along, they jump in the water, they would sink to the bottom, where they could walk along the bottom of the water, okay, holding their breath. Um, we see this today in a few, there's a few things today that have it, besides hippopotamuses, there's a, uh, a cervid, a type of deer that has it, and what they do when they're threatened is they jump in the water and they just kind of, it, it, the sinking allows them to sit on the bottom um, without having to expend energy and be perfectly still when a predator comes by. Um, and it's pro very probable that that's what this, he the hearing was an adaptation to know when the predator's gone, climb back out of the water again and go back to grazing or whatever it was doing. Um, so, so how did that happen? Well, down here we tell, see, the problem is their minds were already made up. Yes. Now, that's right. Now, this is a really important part of the scientific method that uh, Jones is talking about here. Uh, we scientists, uh, what we'll do is we'll take something like, say, oh, here's origin of species, um, or it, it could be, you know, Newton, any, you know, any of these foundational documents um, of our belief system, and we hold these things to be absolutely immutable and sacred. Um, we simply do not accept any evidence that's contrary to what's written in these books. We don't ever adapt or modify or change our theories, you see. Because that's, that, that's what science is all about. Science is about um, having faith in a one particular belief system and forever holding that belief, no matter what evidence comes along, no matter how damaging that evidence might be, we simply put our fingers in our ears and go on believing the holy works. Okay, because that, that, that's... That's science in a nutshell. The same thing, when your worldview is set to believe opposite of what the Bible says, you will swallow this. Now, you know, we uh, in the Evo conspiracy really need to get our shit together and find a way to silence this man. Uh, he's, he's telling all of our deep and dirty, dark secrets. Um, yeah, you see, the reason, the, the reality is, and this is this is something we've tried to keep under our hat, and I guess the cat's out of the bag now, there's no reason to keep on hiding it, that science 
in general, especially evolutionary science, but it's all really all science, uh, we don't actually do any real research or investigation of anything. We simply read the Bible and say the exact opposite that the Bible says. Um, and that, that's really what we, you know, that's, that's how we progress in, a, in, in science. If the Bible says the earth was created in six days, we say, no, the earth was created in four and a half billion years. You see, it's, it's simple. We don't actually even have to ever look at a rock or look through a telescope or a microscope or anything like that. All we got to do is look and, you know, say the exact opposite. We want the audience to understand that the reason we're showing this is we understand, having been indoctrinated ourselves, that many of our audience have also been indoctrinated and their faith in Jesus has been weakened yes. through such teaching. And we're trying to show them how the foundation for evolution has a very soft, weak underbelly. Uh, and, the, and the gaps, the scientific measurement. You see, science is supposed to be about math, experimentation, comparison, anatomy, and yet it's all missing. All right. This is a great example of why these guys fail so miserably um, at their supposed stated goal. Now, that's not really what their, their goal is. They're, they, the claim is made that these kinds of presentations are to, you know, save the unwashed masses, to convince people that, that you know, that, that what we know of origins is actually incorrect. In reality, what they're doing is they're preaching to the already convinced. Um, that In that sense, preaching to the already convinced, uh, getting people to dig deep into their pockets and donate, they do great at that. But when it comes to actually changing people's minds, they fail uh, because of exactly what's going on right here. So he is, Dr. Jones is supposedly showing us the weaknesses of evolution. He's showing us the soft underbelly. He's showing us where the whole science falls apart and is therefore demonstrated to be false. And yet, he can't even get a single thing about the science correct. He can't even describe, define the scientific method accurately. And yet, we are supposed to believe that this icon of knowledge that's wrong on every single point somehow has this information that scientists have been, well, frankly, searching for for 150 plus years. I. Uh, you know, it, it's it's ridiculous. It's a stupid, stupid thing for him to be to to make this this claim. Um, I once was an Evo. Bullshit. You were never an evolutionist. First of all, the word evolutionist is a stupid word, anyways. Um, but the point is, is that give me a break, okay? You were an oil company. You may have been one of the geologists or geologic staff working for an oil company, which meant that your knowledge of paleontology, I would be abundantly surprised that does not go beyond things like foraminiferans and radiolarians which is what people in that field are trained to look at for the prospect of finding oil deposits all right you're not trained in cetacean evolution and taxonomy you're not trained in well in the archosaur taxonomy and evolution because you know nothing about it your information on it has already been shown to be decades old now that brings me to this that brings me to a statement of great import. A question. Why would good scientists, good men, good scholars, adhere to, adopt, and propagate evolutionary theory? Why would well-intentioned individuals embrace evolution? So, interesting question. Why would good men accept evolution? Why um, accept evolution, support it, teach it? Why? Um, one, one that comes to mind uh, is the fact that there is absolutely mountains of evidence in favor of it and absolutely none that actually go against it. The, the things that supposedly disprove evolution that creationists like to bring up are to, down to every single... I mean, et, there's not an exception are misunderstandings, fabrications... Um, fraud, lies, these kinds of... This is the kind of material that the creationist camp brings to the table, okay? They do not bring. There's not... I have read... Again, I'm not going to show what... I've got an extensive creationist library. I, I have lots and lots of ma you know, creation magazines. I read their websites, Answers in Genesis, uh, Institute of Creation Research, um, Young Earth and Old Earth creationist sites. I read this stuff, okay? And not 
once, not one time, have I ever encountered a single point they make where I said, that's kind of a good question, I should look into that. Not once. They, not one thing they've said even warrants that. It's all, every bit of it is a facepalm, is a, you don't know shit about genetics. You don't know shit about paleontology. You don't know shit about astronomy. You don't know shit about geology. That's the response that from me in every single claim that they make. Uh, it's that's plain and simple and I you know that sounds you know whatever I I don't know how else to word it um, but that is the facts I wrote a book hardback book why do men believe evolution against all odds in it I tried to explain some of the reasons good men believe bad science first of all they believe it because their peers believe it first of all I I'm curious as to whenever Carl Bau in any of the shows I've watched of him when he mentions his book, uh, his Why Do Men Believe in Evolution, he always has to add, it's a hardback book, um, as if somehow that's making it more important. I don't know. It, it's just a really odd thing that he, he he's very consistent about it, though. So, I don't know, just interesting. Uh, but the other, the point of this, okay, so good scientists believe in evolution because their peers do. Uh I, I don't even know what to make of that. You know, it, it's, yeah, I don't know, come to college, start my majors program and, you know, ask my colleagues, hey, so what do you guys believe in? I, I, I need to know so I can, you know, make it my belief too. Or do people come to college from a wide variety of different backgrounds and, and understandings of it? I'm Secondly, why do good men believe bad science? They don't always know the data, such as Dr. Jones has talked about today. When he was offered the chair of the Department of Paleontology at a major university, he didn't know about these broad, expansive gaps. Yes, so they lack information. Well, a good example of lacking information would be the fact that the University of Missouri lacks any information that uh, Dr. Floyd Nolan Jones ever was a faculty member there ever got a degree from there or ever was offered a chair of their non-existent paleontology department. I, again, as I covered in part two, I contacted their um, department of geology and um, had them look into this for me. Then there's another reason. Sometime restrictive individuals come into our paths and they represent the Bible or they represent creation and we reflect against them and say if that's what they believe I will not believe it. But the ultimate reason that individuals adopt evolution, if they do so sincerely and professionally, is subliminally an escape from accountability to a creator. Yes. Oh man, he's nailed us. The only reason we believe in evolution is because we don't want to be held accountable for our actions. Uh, we want to run amok. We want to act like monkeys, right? Isn't that how it's supposed to go? You know, we want to we want to do all those fun things that religious people never do, uh, rape and murder and pillage and steal and burn, um, because, you know, we know that there's no consequence in our society for such behavior at all. Now, as we close this program, I think if you watched all the programs sincerely, you realize that we must give an account to a creator. The evidence does not support evolution. The evidence supports creation instead. Would you like to know the creator? I already know the creator. Is there a problem, creator? I have increased engine efficiency 57%. See, obviously the creator is the Kirk. Nomad said it. I believe it. That settles it. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, those of you who made it through all of this, these parts. I appreciate it. I will. I'm going to be start right away on the next. Actually, I've already started filming the next one, which is another um, one about Ian Juby. So I uh, hope you guys... Well, stay tuned.